So we will start with the problem statement and the problem statement is ensuring only one logger in an application. Let's understand this better. So let's say you are designing an application where you want to uh, design a logging utility. Let's call it a logger. Now what does logger do? Uh, logger logs various events uh, whether uh, it's a debugging related information or whether it's a generic information or whether it's a error specific information. But here we need to ensure that all our programs, let's say if we are using Java or .NET, then all our classes in Java or .NET should use the same logger. That means only one instance of the object of logger type should ever be created. What will happen if you create two logger instances? It might not work properly. It might create a couple of logging files and that's not what you want. Now how would we solve this problem traditionally? We would just create a global variable. Suppose I was programming in a C language. I would just create a global variable logger and access it. But there is a problem. And the problem is that it's accessible but it's 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 not a read only variable. So you know somebody can go and create another global variable or somebody can just go and change that instance variable to point to something else. Things can go wrong. So what is the right way of doing it and what is the right way of doing it in typically a O language? Now logger is an example here. It's really the problem context we are working on. But what is the generic design problem here? The generic design problem here is to be able to take control of the creation process of logger object. That means we need to stop others from making a new call onto the logger. Now how do you do that? You can do that by making the constructor private or protected. When you do that, new operator will not work. It will actually give compilation errors. Still you need to uh, hold that instance of logger somewhere. You still want to create an instance. So what you do is you create the instance and hide it inside the class itself. You make it as a static member. Static member because it will uh, it will hold only one single instance. So this is how our class will start looking like. The This is a UML notation. So logger is the name of the class. You can see a static logger logger instance with a negative sign that means it's private and then you see a tilde logger. The tilde here means it's protected. Why is it made protected? So that you can extend it and create uh, extended concrete classes of logger. We'll see an example little later. Now we have done this but something is missing and that something that is missing is how do I really create that instance? I can see that instance, it's a private instance, but how do you create the instance? Because there is no constructor. Uh, the constructor is kind of made private or protected. For that, we need to provide public accessor. Now this is a static data member, so we need to provide a static method which will create the instance of the object. And then that static method becomes the public accessor so that it can, can be invoked by other external clients. And who are these clients? These are the other developers who want to use uh, the logger utility which we are creating. So this is how it starts looking. You can see additional method there. Uh, plus static logger get logger. The plus sign indicates it's a public method. So now you have a basic infrastructure in place to take care of the single instance and then logger class now can have variety of functionality. So you want to log it to a physical file then you'll have to hold a file handle or a file pointer or whatever uh, with something that represents the file uh, over here. And then you will need a certain functionality of adding log entries or setting timestamps and things like that. So that is how this cl class can then have more functionality but the basic structure of the class uh, will ensure that there is a constructor which is private and there is a uh, single instance which is held by the st uh, static data member. What we saw just now was a singleton pattern as defined by Gang of Four and it comes into the category of creational design patterns. The intent behind singleton design pattern is to ensure a class only ever has one instance and provide a global point of access to it. And that's what we exactly did. That we ensured that logger ever has only one instance and then there is a public global point of access to it. That is logger.getLogger which is the static method on the logger class. When do you use this class? What is the applicability of uh, singleton pattern? 
then there must be exactly one instance of a class and it must be accessible from a well known access point then you should consider using singleton design pattern also when the sole instance should be extensible extensible by subclassing so if you remember the logger class we had made the constructor as protected so you can actually extend this class uh, override uh, the constructor and do something different if you need to do that and hence client should be able to use an extended instance without modifying their code because the basic uh, interface the global point of access is defined by the parent class so in such cases you should use singleton design pattern